A couple of weeks ago, 207's Peggy Kaiser said she planned to visit a small turkey farm to find out what life was like there in the weeks leading up to Thanksgiving. Small farms across the state allow buyers to know exactly where their food came from and how it was raised. Plenty of folks find this idea appealing, and the turkeys from Harris Turkey Farm are in great demand. Peggy is here now with more on the story. Well, Rob and Amanda, it felt a bit like we were going on an elementary school class trip, field trip rather, when we visited Jason and Chase Harris at their turkey farm in West Newfield. I learned so much. For instance, baby turkeys are called poults. I didn't know that. What we also learned is that these two guys put their heart and soul into raising these turkeys in a healthy and humane way, and the outcome is delicious. Very friendly. Clearly. It all started innocently enough. Jason and Chase Harris got four turkey chicks a few years ago. They raised them and discovered that they loved doing it. And they realized they had the perfect spot for a turkey farm. So we decided instead of mowing this backfield, we would raise turkeys. And just like that, the Harris Turkey Farm in West Newfield was hatched. Their three bucolic acres are now devoted to raising hundreds of turkeys. As you come over the rise and look across this little valley, you see dozens of dazzling white turkeys roaming freely, pecking at the earth, picking away at pumpkins. They are broad-breasted white turkeys, bred to grow fast and gain a good amount of breast meat in a short time. But they're in fresh air, they're eating grass and bugs and taking dust baths. What birds normally would do? Every step in the process of raising these birds is as healthy and humane as possible. When they are growing in the nursery, we're preparing the pastures at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, so we rototill before they go out, reseed it with sunflower, millet. We did use some canola this year. Um, so all that grows up and it's beautiful, it's blooming. Um, mm. And by the time they get out there, they've got uh, coverage from the sun. Mm -hmm. They've got protection from overhead predators. And uh, they've got all the bugs and everything in there and the greenery to eat. And the turkeys literally eat the field right down to the ground over the course of the summer and fall. Jason and Chase have created a space where they can raise several hundred turkeys. They process about 50 or 60 of those specifically for Thanksgiving. The rest of the turkeys are processed and set aside. That meat goes into their sought-after line of homemade pot pies, chili, and soup. Selling those products help to make their business less seasonal and more year-round. The week before Thanksgiving is the time of year that these turkeys are raised for. And processing the bird is a job that the Harrises do with great care. You were talking about the fact that this even though these are livestock, these are not pets, you have cared for them, you have put a tremendous amount of work into raising them, and you show that same sort of care when you're dispatching them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the way you treat the animal throughout its life and in the process of um, harvesting uh, will result in a better product. Jason and Chase kill the birds and process them right here. Do you get attached to them? Is processing them? No. Nope. Not no. at all? No. Because no. you know what you're doing at the outset. And you know, yeah, yeah, I look at yeah. it as um, we don't name them. They're livestock. They're not pets. They were raised for the purpose of food. Um, and, and giving someone else's family a, a good, healthy bird right. that was raised well. Really well. Yeah. Their customers pay about five and a half dollars per pound for these homegrown local turkeys, a lot more than you'd pay for a grocery store turkey. Your customers are ordering their Thanksgiving turkey in June. Yes. yes. How quickly do you sell out? Oh gosh, <laughs> uh, I think this year we were sold out in three weeks. Jason and Chase are looking to slowly grow their business, knowing that what appeals to their customers is all the care that goes into tending these beautiful birds. Oh, I think the biggest part is that how they were raised, um, knowing that they were processed here on the farm, and they're supporting a local small family business. Mm -hmm. 
Another talent that they discovered in this process is that they love to create and prepare a line of food which incorporates the homegrown turkey meat. Part of that line includes three styles of turkey pot pies and they are flying off the shelves. We'll have more about the Harris Turkey Farm on the 207 section of our website and mobile app. And later on in the show, Chase and I will step into the kitchen at the farm and give you a few ideas of what to do with your turkey leftovers. <laughs> Which we can all use. Yeah, it's yeah. not turkey tetrazzini, but... It yeah. isn't turkey tetrazzini, but this may be better. I, I know. <laughs> better <laughs> than your turkey tetrazzini? We, you're sitting the bar high. You are. Also, can we just acknowledge that final shot in which their dog was running around with the turkeys? They and just coexist? They totally coexist. She's completely, you know, free to bound around the property. And from a distance, because of her coloring, she looks a little bit like a deer. So out of the corner of my eye while we were doing the story, I kept thinking, what was that? You know, but it was, I think it was Lily bounding around the field. She's beautiful. Aww, and she totally gets along with the turkeys and vice versa. Great. So, awesome. Thanks, babe. <laughs>